Hello everyone, I'm Jake, the Dungeon Master for Venture Ventures Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. We are on episode 35, and uh, we're getting near the end. I feel like we've got a handful left, depending on how things go. I'm going to be speeding things up a little. Double it. Do you, th you think double? Like 12, maybe? Just go ahead and double whatever number of episodes you're thinking. All right. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, previously, though, the new group of adventurers were raised from the dead by a pit fiend named Bell, a very powerful former archdevil of Avernus, and uh, told that they would be in his service in exchange for being alive and also the possibility of staying alive after they serve him and were sent to retrieve nine adamantine rods and found that they were in a derelict wrecked flying fortress where they uh once they got there they started climbing met some foes and killed some foes and got in a fight with a Vrock, a bunch of rocks last time. Uh, do you have any puns for me, Dave, on that account? No. <laughs> uh, and proceeded to try and leave and were caught by some familiar people, at least to the players, not to the characters. Mad Maggie's crew arrived as they were leaving and looked at them as potential loot. The group rebuffed their advances quite easily while flying away very slowly. And that's where we left off with them flying away. There are still three Vrocks kind of keeping their distance from the group watching them obviously uh jazzy is using his flying boots and uh draco is using his wings and everyone is uh everyone else right, is being... I, I got your i got your puns now so the three vrocks are okay uh bavrock obama okay and then vrock hudson okay and then <laughs> Rock Lesnar. Okay, got it. Last week it was all Dwayne the Rock uh, mm -hmm. Johnsons. That's great. Uh, as we <laughs> as we open up on these rocks trailing you guys, trying to figure out if they want to attack or not. You guys are flying away very slowly, and in the distance you see a dark metal object flying through the air with a bunch of coal black smoke shooting out of the back of it uh almost like a missile uh to, to us it, it would look like a very dirty missile flying through the air and it's it's moving pretty slowly uh fast enough to stay afloat but it's still kind of coming around and uh, the Vrocks are so enthralled with you all as prey that they're not paying attention. And this infernal missile comes and hits them and in a huge explosion, these Vrocks are no more. And yeah. It's convenient. Uh, gents, I don't want to be flying anymore. This now long no longer feels like a safe place. To the ground, to the ground, to the ground, Draco. The and ground we, is uh, always better. <laughs> we descend down to the ground. As you descend to the ground and put your feet Did down. all of the people in the infernal machines go inside? Or are there still people you don't, down you're, there? You don't know now. Uh, you were past them. Oh. Uh so you could definitely go back, but as you as you before that happens, as your feet hit the ground, Balacros the imp becomes visible, and uh, 
starts patting himself in his tiny little pockets and finally finds something and pulls out a little rock with runes written on it and throws it on the ground and takes a few steps back and uh, tells you guys to step back. And uh, a few moments later, there's a whirring sound and a whoosh. And before you stands a large pit fiend, not Bell, just a different type of very powerful devil, uh, stands before you, unfurls its wings, and says, I've been sent by Bell to retrieve you now. Oh. Okay. It seems like you were summoned by the imp to retrieve us. I'm not... Piss him off. Never mind. Um, we're fine. <laughs> the imp uses that stone as a locator. Right. Rather than... Yep. Thor, have mercy. All right, let's so go. So can you carry all of us at once? Step into the circle. And he waves his hand, and the dirt parts uh, in various places into a very intricate pattern uh, in the in the hard packed soil, and uh, there's now a teleportation circle. Uh, it's the circle he's referring. Uh, you guys all step in the circle, I assume. Yep. Yeah. We're we supposed to hold hands. <laughs> uh, he goes. It's not necessary. Okay. And he steps into the circle, and the next thing you know, you're being squeezed through a a invisible tube it feels like doesn't hurt it just feels super weird and uh at the other end it feels like you're being extruded through a toothpaste tube and you're back in the forge where you were first raised from the dead uh, very hot hotter than the outside of Avernus uh and before you sits bell on his levitating levitating a throne and he says do you have my rods yeah i got you your do. rods i'm gonna start pulling we all have a couple rods. of them here here you go and uh a bunch of imps one for each rod appear and they grab a rod and fly it to him and he collects them and he reaches out to the side and to the side of his throne and runs his nail along the air and you don't hear anything and grabs seems like nothing out of the air and just peels reality open and there's a little black hole <laughs> square black hole and he deposits the adamantine rods in there and then lowers the flap, and it's almost like nothing was wrong. Nothing, nothing happened. It's everything just what you see. What you see completely disappears, goes back to normal, and he turns back to you, and he says telepathically this time, "Now that you have proven yourself, I need you." And it is in your interest, which I've mentioned before, as I chose you specifically for your interest in El Terrell. Uh I need you to go to the scab, something called the scab. And uh, this is a place where Zeriel's sword was buried, and a citadel grew up around the sword. And then Avernus, not taking kindly to such a show of radiance, started growing up around the citadel, forming a scab. And I need you to enter that citadel and retrieve the sword, because I believe it is a way for you to either kill Zeriel or convert her, convince her 
to revert back to her her angelic ways. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Real quick, I'm assuming this is going to be dangerous. There's going to be things trying to kill us there. Yes, we have reports of demons digging their way into the scab, trying to get at the citadel. I have my doubts that they'll be, have any success, but my spies tell me that they are digging in and around it. Uh, yeah. Is there any way we could, uh, you know, sleep a bit before doing that? Uh, getting those rods kind of tuckered me out real good. I don't see why not. Do you have a uh, place you'd like to... It's pretty hot down here for you now, and, and more. Do you know anywhere where something won't try to kill me in my sleep? I think I can arrange a room for you. That would be most pleasant. It will not be pleasant it will just be tolerable but that's you will not suffer down here that's pleasant and i will be sending you with someone i think will who will be needed someone we caught and have imprisoned oh. and hopefully this disgusting creature can assist you in your goals but for now he uh, snaps his finger and an imp appears and he stares at the imp it appears they're speaking telepathically and turns back to you guys and says out loud not telepathically now Bill will be leading you to your quarters. We have arranged for a steady supply of ice blocks to be put in the room on a regular basis, which will be fanned by two dozen imps. Thank you. That's pretty satisfying. That's pretty very kind of you. And uh, the imp flies down to you guys and leads you off to your room. And it is a very small room, probably like 15 by 15. One door, no windows, carved out of the mountain. And uh, sure enough, when you get there, there's imps pushing trying their hardest to push these large blocks of ice into the room and uh, <laughs> um, uh, and they're cursing under their breath I got distracted by the kitty cat uh, <laughs> I help push ice what's that? I'll help push ice blocks yeah it's super simple like uh <laughs> Figured you don't, it would be for me. <laughs> you don't get any thanks from the imps, but uh, they... Uh, they. I just uh, did it to push my face against the cold, cold Sure, ice. sure. Shabby <laughs> takes off his shirt and folds it, puts it down, and helps, helps okay. uh, with the ice. And the ice is melting rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, even as you're moving it, you feel like you can see it losing mass. And... Uh, Sure enough, when the within a few minutes, the first ice block you saw pushed in there is basically nothing, and there's a steady stream of water flowing out of the room, and uh, the ice is obviously giving off uh, condensation, and uh, it's getting pretty moist in there, but it's a lot cooler than it was, so you got that going Take for it. you. If there's nothing else, we can skip ahead you can get your long rest. Yep. Beautiful. It's nothing else.
Were we going to talk about what we chose for level 11? Oh, yeah. Uh, good good call. Also, yeah. can you do it on Jarvis? It's not Jarvis I got anymore. it covered. Oh, you I can't, it. But, but I got it covered. <laughs> uh, Shabby, what'd you take for level it. 11? I just got a six level spell slot, so I took heal. Nothing heal. else really changed. Yeah. I also took a six, got a six level spell slot, and I also took heal. Good call. Shabby. We didn't converse. <laughs> The only thing I get as a barbarian is relentless rage, which is pretty cool because I get to make oh, constitution one. saving throws when I go down to zero hit points. But if I'm killed outright, I'm still killed. Hard so you to get do like, it would, yeah, it'd be real hard to kill you outright. <laughs> yeah. Uh, short of like a nuclear explosion, magical nuclear explosion. I don't know that you could be killed outright. Uh, 200 plus damage <laughs> yeah before it was like just relentless or whatever it's i forget what level that happens and i just automatically jump back up but this That's one just lets me make, make saves so you have your half orc trait and then you have this now right yeah cool. you're real hard to kill now um and i'll speak for draco he too got a six level spell slot and it appears he took sunbeam which should come in handy down here if he could see anything and i imagine that conversation with bell was excessively confusing for him <laughs> for bell or for oh, for, for draco, draco. Oh. who can't see any magical beings That's true. for 4 days just standing naked in the room <laughs> and yeah. he's naked with a leaf on his ribs yeah that's that's the state of things didn't bell didn't <laughs> seem interested at all and uh <laughs> You guys awake in the morning, getting a long rest, and you are shown back to Bell's chamber, the forge, with the lava surrounding the outskirts of the large room, uh, and Bell telepathically says to you guys, I'll be sending you straight to the scab with this companion I mentioned yesterday. And uh, he says something telepathically uh, to another imp floating by him, and the imp flies off, and a few minutes later, a holophant walks in, familiar to all of you, not your characters, but it's Lulu, except she's missing her two front legs, and they're now replaced with infernal hellish looking uh artificial limbs huh. half and... expecting baby hands <laughs> right <laughs> that was such ah, a traveling dis- with a cousin this is wonderful <laughs> she she says to you uh she she squints at you first kind of assessing you and she says yeah i i guess that's I guess that's I guess we're cousins. Certainly, and I and I give her a a, a nice toot with my trunk. And she she nods. Uh and she's assessing all of you. Just trying to she doesn't really like she gives the worst look to Draco. Uh you know, his his deeply infernal heritage is repugnant. And he's oblivious to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Bell says, We captured Lulu a while ago. And she was a companion of Zeriel. This is telepathically now. And he says, She will undoubtedly help you as it is in her nature. Useful. If you take all the help, have no further questions. Welcome to the party, Lulu. I'm Shabby. Uh, And Bell says, If you have no further questions, I'll be sending you along your way. Lulu greets you, Shabby. And and uh, 
as, as pleasant as you as players remember. Uh, doesn't seem to be struggling too much with her appendages. Any questions for Bell? Uh, are you going to teleport us straight there? How close can you, like, what's the, the plan here? I'm going to teleport you as close as I can get you. Ideally, it would be right next to the scab. And you will have to find your way through the scab to the citadel and find a way in. Okay. All right, and once we find this sword, well, where, where are we supposed to find Zariel? Are we coming back here to you? Are you? Are we giving you the sword to kill Zariel or do whatever angelic things you were talking about? He says to you, telepathic, all of you, telepathically, uh, I am, as much as I'd like to, I'm unable to strike Zariel in any way. So you will be going to her after you have the sword. And, and where is she? Is she? We'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. If you survive and retrieve the sword. All right. And and one one more question for you. See, I've been carrying this around, and I with my trunk, I pick up my hilariously tiny hand axe. Mm -hmm. I've been carrying this around, and it doesn't seem to do much down here. Do you have something better I could use? Uh, yes. And, uh, an imp comes in a few moments later. There's like a minute of awkward silence as he's not saying anything while he waits. <laughs> and, uh, an imp leading a train of imps who are dragging a large axe behind them. Did you want another hand axe? Um, uh, I'm better with the hand axes, just one that's more effective. This is a bit dull. And, this uh... should do. Okay. And it looks nicer. Sweet. Uh, yeah. So you now have a plus one hand axe. Woo! Thanks, buddy. Yep. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Why is... My curiosity has gotten the better of me. Why <laughs> is this creature nearly naked. He's also ignoring you, you might have noticed. Fun fact, he doesn't know you're there. Uh, the big the one's side effect of a Draco. spell that he cast during the last kerfuffle. That's hilarious. It is rather funny. I hope it won't hinder you if you get attacked by demons too much, I hope you can... Overcome. Well, I figure we just point him and tell him to start blasting, and, and that's going to do enough, I hope. Fair enough. Should uh, be fine. Is there anything else I will get you on your way? I think we're good. Well, I mean, you're not, you're not adept at, at perhaps healing magical ailments such as whatever he did to himself that made him blinded to magical creatures. It's a wild magic sure seems thing. that way. It will wear off. Hopefully. We'll find out. Maybe his clothes will come back too. Maybe. Got any Does rags we could throw clothes? on him? I'm tired of Oh, that's that. a good idea. <laughs> I have we have some rags. Plenty so of to tie around his waist or something, you know. Dead people to pull rags off of, and he goes silent, and then another minute passes without talking, and then three imps fly in, draped over them are some rags that he can throw on. Mismatched holes in the clothes, but it'll fit him and cover him up a bit more. And lastly, uh, Bill, uh, right before we were brought to you, we saw something flying through the sky that caused a huge explosion and killed a bunch of rocks. Is that you? Yes. One of my warships was 
in the area and Vrox are one of the most annoying demons, <laughs> although they're all annoying, but that's what the missiles are for. Tell them good aim. Worked really well. Yeah. Promote that man, or at least give him, I don't know, a bonus. Uh, devil, not man. Promote I created devil. the missiles to home on to demons, so... You're, like like you're up for a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so how are you sending us? <laughs> I'll be teleporting you. And... It's going to feel like a squeezy tube again. Okay, I'm ready. And he stares at you for 15 seconds, all of you. <laughs> Doesn't say anything. And then you feel that strange pulling and squeezing and sucking uh, whirring noise and you get pulled through reality and extruded on the other side at the base of a large hill and I posted a piece of art from the adventure in the pin reference material Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very much this the mountain is is fleshy and oozing disgusting very literal pus and what you see is a great disgusting scab the size of a large hill uh, rising up from a stinking swamp of blood, the domed top of an alabaster temple pokes through the scab. Many black iron chains of Avernus converge on the building, attaching within the grotesque mound. There are real fans of chains around here, I've noticed. Yeah, they're real, real good at making those. Yeah. Do you think uh, you guys could... I'll, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. Uh, could you guys fly us up there? I'd be happy to, buddy. <laughs> I've been waiting for that for days. Keep your Let trunk off like... my helmet. <laughs> As I bear hug you. <laughs> and you guys fly up. And you see as you're rising up, you get towards the top of this scab portion. And you see a large hole in the scab. Uh that is covered in darkness, not uh, just because it's, a, it's only because it's a hole. I'm not saying it's magical darkness. Um, and uh, yeah, where would you like to go? There's a hole that seems I, to be carved into the scab. I slap my trunk on Zartrom's, or on, sorry, on Horton's forehead and um, cast light on his forehead. So he is my shiny, he's my flashlight. I can see already. I don't need this. Oh, but I do. <laughs> and then we had I I had with Horton. I assume Draco and Lulu, who can also fly, are Manning Shabby. Uh, <laughs> yep. But and... I, I start flying towards the hole using Horton as my flashlight. Okay. I'm gonna sell uh, you for ivory when we're done with this. As you get closer, you'd be able to get is a lot. That what a flashlight is? I have beautiful tusks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a D&D &D fleshlight. Uh, <laughs> as you get closer to the hole, it sure is a gaping wound. And uh, descending into the darkness, you don't see any light ahead of you. And Jazzy, you are correct in using the light spell. Uh, you think it was a good call on your part? And as you're descending... Well, to be fair, I think everything I do is a good call. But sure, I'm <laughs> glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you're very sure this time. 110% uh, <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, you come to a... a and, and this the way this scab is dug out, uh, think of it as... Think of it as a cylindrical ant farm 
So imagine the uh. citadel is like my hand and the scab is around it and there's tunnels bored into it and the way to picture it and the way it's presented in the book is it's basically like a kid's ant hill that you know the glass on the side and all that mm-hmm. um, and you do see some light emanating from weirdly enough everything around you is fleshy and scabby and oozing nastiness uh, weirdly enough this glow is coming from a window and uh you get closer and you see that it's the Citadel's stained glass window. The opaque blue and yellow panes depict contemplative, depict the contemplative face of a beautiful angel. You can't see beyond it. Uh, it's just a beautiful stained glass. Well, Horton, you've made a phenomenal flashlight, and I believe personally that you will make a wonderful battering ram as well. And I just take him and use him to shatter the window and throw him inside. Oh okay. my god. Uh, when you hurt you. When you do that, Horton, are you good aligned? Uh, yes. You're not neutral? No. I'm good. Okay. Uh, when you touch the window, when your face smashes into the window... Rather unpleasant. Or, I'm neutral good. I apologize. Okay, you're still good. Uh, when your face touches the window, it definitely doesn't budge an inch, but you are granted with 20 temporary hit points as your face hits the window. You feel a rush of radiant energy feels wonderful and simultaneously simultaneously bad at the same time because you were just your face was just forced into this window just jettisoned into a window Sick. and it didn't work so like what well, um, i i don't know how to explain this perhaps something bigger but hold i got on. this hold on and i i don't wait for him and i just All right. i try to bust through cuz i'm a lot bigger than him are you good aligned uh i am also good aligned you too feel this rush it's disappointing not to feel the window the stained glass it budge, is disappointing <laughs> budge at all but you do get 20 temporary hit points huh. well <clears throat> um do you get uh, what i'm saying right right it's strange it should have hurt it should have broke <laughs> shabby I don't know how else to say this. Headbutt that window. Trust me. Have I already flown in there? Yeah, you're with everyone. Okay. All right. All right, I'll give it a go. You headbutt the window and... I don't know if Shabby's good or not, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> you, are you good? Lawful neutral. You headbutt the window and you've been in a lot of scraps in your life, headbutted a few people. This is the hardest thing your head has hit that you've chosen to <laughs> to hit with your head. And Ooh. Uh, it hurts uh, very, very badly. You don't uh, feel that? I do feel that. Oh, oh. You take you... one point of bludgeoning damage. You've got a small nick on your head now. You got a little goose egg rising up from your noggin. It's a very pretty stained glass window though. This is rather odd. I thought for sure that was our way in. Do you feel does anybody else feel better after hitting that thing? Oh, I feel wonderful. I mean, oh, yeah. slightly perturbed because again, I am a very large elephant. Yeah, and I'm like a metal ball, basically. That's why I threw you at it. I thought that would be a no-brainer. You're not that large. No, but I'm covered in metal. I was talking to oh. Jazzy. <laughs> there are large bigger enough. elephants. There are bigger ones, sure, but I'm large. But Stronger. there's also smaller one points at Lulu. That's true. 
<laughs> True, maybe a smaller one. Maybe we need something smaller. Lulu, how do you feel being vaulted through the air? She just flies up to the glass and touches it with her trunk. And she says, I don't know that we can possibly break through this glass. Ah, I have an idea. Is there Why? a latch? Do you see a latch anywhere? Are you searching uh, with your light uh, around the edges and stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. I put my head near the ledges. <laughs> it smells see terrible. See anything? Because that's see. where it meets the That'd scabby be... flesh. A12. Yeah, you're not seeing it's... Most of it's covered by flesh or very well built into this building. Well, I've never met a window that didn't open before or didn't break, so I don't know what to do here, guys. Hold on. You do Lulu. see other paths leading off, uh, but L what do you say to Lulu? I was just going to ask her, you, she, you say you were part of like, Zer like you know Zerial or you're somehow affiliated with Zerial. Have you ever been here before? Like before all this I have BS not, happened to it? I have not been in the scab area, I vaguely recall... Have you recall, been in the Citadel, though? I vaguely recall being in the Citadel when Zerial's sword was driven into the ground. Uh, Do you know of a possible entrance anywhere? Well, there's an entrance down, and I think that's our best... There's doors down at the base, and we're you know, near the top of the building. I think we're just going to have to follow these tunnels through the scab. And, yeah. Well, all right. Down and inward, it looks like. All right. So Back to positions, everybody. Uh, Keep your hand on the right wall kind of deal. All the tunnels it's and gross. chambers were dug out uh, by something. You see claw marks and sometimes teeth marks uh, in various places. Not a lot of tooling being used I, to carve these I places really out. hope whatever dug this tunnel isn't still in these tunnels cuz it looks like how wide is this tunnel I was just about to get there uh and the tunnels for all intents and purposes about 10 feet wide unless I tell you otherwise uh what else uh some of the liquid oozing out of the scab appears to be not just pus and stuff like that. It also appears to be blood and is uh, quite noxious uh, in, in smell. You do hear every so often some sounds echoing through the tunnels. You don't know what it is. And it's muffled a lot. Um... You have two tunnels currently that you can take. One going down at an angle and one kind of going off straight. Uh, what uh, you think is straight. Down is the direction, right, boys? Yeah. Lulu. While we're in here, if you guys don't mind, I will take the lead. And I'll cast protection from good and evil on myself. I don't mind that at all, sir. Are we so, walking or are we continuing to fly? Because I'll hold you in front of me while we're no, flying. That's no, fine. we're in a tunnel. We can walk just fine. I'll continue to. Fl well, no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna walk. Okay. Yeah, my boots have a time limit. I'll walk. Walking. Uh, I imagine Draco would not want to touch this gross stuff, and he will him, continue to fly because he doesn't have a time limit on his wings. Him, him, and Lulu are continuing to fly. So it's uh, Horton in first, two second. I'm second. Horton, Chavi. Then Draco, then Lulu, then me. Okay. Uh, continuing down the tunnel. And I transfer uh, light to my stuff instead of instead of Horton, Horton's forehead. Okay. Uh, you've got light. Who else doesn't have dark vision here? I have dark vision. I believe so. Does Everyone Draco. else except you, Jazzy, probably. Probably. Okay. Uh, all right. Heading down, down, down. 
Uh, you spend 15 minutes heading down and you come to a drop off of about 20 feet with a tunnel below you heading in two different directions, both about the same decline. Uh, you guys fly down. Uh, which way would yeah. you like to go, west or east? Which Protection. way smells better? That's an that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I don't also know what better the... is for Jazzy, but everything is bad. Smells bad. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for a perception check, you can do that. With I will. I'll take it. Protection from good and evil is over because it's only ten minutes. Okay. That would be a sixteen for my smell of vision. It's all it's all the same. It, it all smells bad. You are starting... this way smells better. East. Okay, east. Uh, <laughs> as you start going that way, you hear what sounds like muffled, like burping, or or like. Very loud, since this is all flesh around you. It's 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 uh like grumbling or or like just gurgling every so often, and it kind of reverberates through the walls in uh, various levels. Uh, continuing on, you come to another fork in the tunnels. that uh, I need you to make a uh, perception check or I'll make a perception why not okay all of us 12 12 um, no just uh, the person ahead I'm in front so for sure, sure the grumbling you think is going to is more towards the west uh, and you're starting to hear noises uh, like cackling some any of you speak abyssal no oh. do either of these look like they're angled downwards they're both angled downwards somewhat okay. so you're going Draco you think... does Draco does okay Draco says to you guys I hear voices and someone saying in abyssal both directions telling people to dig. Mm. Hmm. This maybe, might not be the way. Maybe backtrack. Yeah, because if they're still digging, they're obviously not in. That's so go and take the west path then? Yeah, let's, let's try west. <clears throat> okay. You backtrack and you start to go west and you drop down further and you come to a section uh, where you hear... After hearing all that, can I, metagamingly, can I ask for a, can we get a stealth check? Like, are you guys okay with trying to sneak through this now that we know there's people in these tunnels? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm not good at it at all. But no, me neither. Worth yeah. a shot. We'll, uh, Stealth. Oh, 13. Lulu, Lulu can help the group stealth with... Let's hear what everyone got first. 7 for Jazzy, 9 for Draco. Mm -hmm. 11. 13. 13 being the best, Lulu rolled a 1. So we're super stealthy in this flesh tunnel. Yep. Can't hear us at all. I have disadvantage and I got the best. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> you uh you come to a pool of red liquid that looks like blood uh floating in the water is a large humanoid figure not large but medium d and d size wise uh looks like an old lady face down in the blood. Think she's dead. Looks like it. 
I say we just leave her. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> and uh, behind you, you start to hear a buzzing. And as you're really sure that that sounds bug-like buzzing, a roar is unleashed from around you. And appearing before you is a very large ape-like creature uh, that I think it was your previous group. You guys have fought a Barlgura before? It wasn't you guys. No, I don't, no I don't think we fought a Bulgaria yet. At the uh, Demon Zapper, I think you did. Mm-mm. No, that was, was like a, that was a big toothy thing. Yeah. Okay. Because we uh, thought it was smiley. It wasn't smiley. <laughs> and it was not smiley. <laughs> yes, so uh, this ape-like demon with red eyes, blue face, fiery bright fur roars at you. And let's go ahead and roll initiative. As, as we're rolling initiative, I blow my trunk back at him. Okay. Deal. I rolled an eight. I rolled a cleric roll. I got a two. Draco got a seven. No, 16. Okay, chap, chap. D20. You're out. Seven. <laughs> and... and Lulu. Lulu got a fucking another one. Two ones in a row for old Lulu. Get him out of the way now. It's fine. Yeah, I don't think that's how she works. <laughs> She's... I feel like I don't often roll well with her. Draco, you're up first. The drone buzzing noise... It's coming from behind you, and in front of you is a Barl Gura. Okay. Um, he is going to, right off the bat, try to banish the Bal Gura. Okay, what's the save? It is a 16 charisma save. You banish something you can't see? Oh, Ooh. he can't see it. Can't That's a good that. point. He just hears roars. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. We're good here. We're okay. He, scared shitless, is going to cast Mage Armor on him. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Because he's practically naked. Um, so he'll cast Mage Armor on himself and hide behind uh, Jazzy. Okay. <laughs> the Barl Gura goes next. And is going to leap across the bloody pool and recklessly how large is the bloody pool uh it is 30 feet across okay and the floating woman's just like in the middle of it somewhere yeah not moving okay good horizontal leap uh it leaps forward approaching you horton let's go 15 feet tall, it's going to recklessly attack you. With three I'm like, I'm like at it, it's like thigh. Yeah. First one is a bite. 18 to hit? No. And then it's going to try and punch you in the face? Bring it on. 16, and it's going to try and punch you again, and a 26. That hits. I will use my Wrath of the Storm and make him take lightning damage for hitting me. 14 bludgeoning damage from the fist. Can I get a dex save, DC 16? Fail. Oh, sweet. He takes 10 lightning damage. Nice. I'm like a bug zapper. Yeah. It's zip. It did hurt, though. 
and it's your turn now. Well, you're a big fella, and I'm going to cast a fourth level Spirit Guardians. Nice wisdom. Wisdom saving throw, please. Fail. He will take 21 radiant damage. Nice. And that will be the end of my turn. Shabarific. Um, I just pre-rolled everything. So Shabby just gets out his great axe, starts swinging. He rages. His nostrils are all flared. And if you look into his eyes, they almost look like, like just spirals. Like he's just... He's raging, out of control. He's raging, Cajun. One swing, nineteen to hit. Yes. It's thirty damage on that one. Jesus Christ. And then uh, eleven, I assume, does not hit. So. Who is not here in hell with us? Uh, eleven does not hit. And that's it. Okay. This bar Barl Gura, Mrs. Horton, gets. Uh, resoundingly punched or punches Horton in the face quite quite uh, well gets shocked and then uh, hit by some spirits hit by Shabby running forward angry and this thing is looking so rough it's more red than it was already and now coming up the tunnel from behind you is a large bug. Looks like a a large mosquito, uh, ten feet wide, flying forward. It's got a large proboscis on its jutting out of it, the front of it. And as it gets closer, you hear this droning. Uh, get louder and louder until uh, your head starts pounding and pounding harder and harder and I need all of you to make a constitution saving throw it's not charmed or frightened is it the the, the, the effect that um, happen no it's not okie dokie Yep. 19. 5. 11. Uh, and then Draco got 15 for Draco. Okay. Uh, what'd you get, Shabby? I'm sorry. 19. Uh, Horton, the droning fills your head, and you think your heavy plate armor is insulating it, amplifying it in your head, and you fall unconscious. Oof. The rest of you are immune to this effect now. Going forward. So Spirit Guardians goes away, I'm assuming. It's concentration? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The next Kazmi... is going to approach Shabby and try to stab you with its proboscis mouth. 24. That's not enough. Actually, it is. 8. 13, 18, 22, 26. As it juts into you, your body, Shabby, you feel it sucking blood out of you. You take 26 necrotic damage. 
and your hit point maximum is reduced by that much. How does that work? With Does the temporary hit points affect that at all? Uh, he didn't get the 20. He's oh, neutral. that's right. That's right. So what happens with uh, Shabby? Do I take do I reduce my max hit points by twenty six or thirteen? Uh, you take half think? damage on that, uh, so it would be thirteen. But then I change my max damage to by thirteen. Okay. Down. Yeah. Lulu's gonna run up. Lulu. Lala. Lala is going to run up and trumpet sparkles in one of the Kazmis and the Bar Barl Gura. I can't say that word to save my life. Uh, and do a sparkle trumpet show on these guys. That's a fail. And a fail. Ten. Fourteen, nineteen, twenty. The Baralgura relieving the DM of his need to say the name gets its face ripped off by these holy sparkles coming out of Lulu's trunk. And now it's dead. How about you work? computer there we go and the casme takes that that's lulu's turn and jazzy well, thanks for a glorious long rest. I no longer heal people. Um, I am going to go ahead and summon up, seeing seeing my fellow cleric go down, I'm going to summon up a uh, whirling wall of blades in a straight line angled so it both blocks it and hopefully can hit both of these big bug creatures, um, as well as block the path. Um, so at like an angle. As I summon up a blade barrier with my six level spell. Okay, what's the save? So uh, it is a dexterity saving throw. First one passes, I assume, because it's 21. That does pass, yes, yes. And a 19. Also passes, so they're gonna take half damage. Ooh, good rolls, 19. 42, 45. 45 total have to 22 points of damage to both of them. Um, they're in a wall of whirling blades. Um, it is providing everyone behind it with three quarters cover if that ever matters. Um, and because of the size of this tunnel, it is taking up the complete space so it is a full blockage of the tunnel cool and it's whirling blades wielded by spiked gauntleted fists so course. yeah okay i get it <laughs> just flavor uh a, it's very loud now in this tunnel extremely loud. i imagine the walls are getting like slashed up and Spurning yeah, blood it, as well. Blood's being that's a very good that's a fucking fantastic point. <laughs> uh the terrain is just going nuts. <laughs> everyone needs to make um Oops. a wisdom saving throw as the blood is hitting all of you. I'm unconscious. Do I still make one? Sure. Is it a fear effect? <laughs> no. No. Okie dokie. Did you say wisdom? Yes. 21. 19 for Jazzy. 8 for Draco. 
Draco, you can add this to his, everyone's past except Draco. Uh, let's add some insult to injury, I guess. <laughs> Uh, he now has the gains of the flaw. I am cruel and uncaring towards others. And this flaw overrides any conflicting personality trait. <laughs> awesome. Noted. I will pass that along. He's naked, he can't see, and now he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's his turn. That's right. Draco's okay. playing naked and afraid. Yep. Um, so I asked, can Draco see the bugs? No. Okay. How wide is the tunnel? Ten feet. Okay. None of us have told him what's happening yet. He can guess there's something bad in that direction. The only thing. Wait, wait, let me just double check. Let me double check. This is a really poor roll on that wild that magic a, surge. That was a <laughs> shitty roll for this area. Um, so because it's because it's just a tunnel in one direction, and there's clearly something bad in that direction, even though he can't precisely aim at it, um, he's going to throw his sunbeam directly down that tunnel okay how big is it the... it is a five foot wide 60 foot long line okay and can it is there any stipulation in the spell about it going through other effects other than it just being light uh no but it grants three quarter three quarters covers to you guys true it does is that an attack or is it a? It is no. It is a save. It is a Constitution saving throw okay. for anything caught in the light. Pass. And if they're undead, they have disadvantage, but I don't think they are. And two threes for the last Casmi. That's a fail. Pass fail. Okay, and that. Let me mark that slot off in my sheet of paper. Sixty-eight. Yeah. Uh, 43 total. Okay. Have to 21. It kills one of the Kazmis. And after that bright blast of light um, in his hand, whatever his focus is, which I can't remember what it is, um, but in his hand for the duration, a moat of brilliant radiance shines in your hands. It sheds bright light for 30 feet and dim for another 30. So it's a, it's a concentration spell, so it keeps on going. Okay. The, the beam stops, but the moat still is there. Horton, you're unconscious. Shabby, there's now a whirling barrier of blades between you and the Kazmi. What mm, do you that, do? Is the tunnel like where we're going to go or is that backtracking for us? They came like, from behind us, right? Yeah, they came from behind The Kazmis us. came from behind us, but is that how we're going to... Are we going to go to where they are, essentially, is what I'm asking? I no. think we're going to go the way we were heading. Yeah. Um, trying to think of anything I can do. I think I just stay put. Okay. I'll just, well, I guess I'll just ready, take the ready action. Or you can take a dodge action, or you can take a. Yeah, okay, I'll take a dodge. Okay. Kazmi. Kazmi is going to start to turn in the wall. Yes, yeah. a dexterity saving throw. Oh. Nineteen. Nineteen. So it passes. Seventeen. Twenty-four. Twenty-nine. 
40 points, so 20. Damn. Points of damage from the blade barrier. Gets fucked up. It goes out of the blade barrier. Certainly. And It'll do that. disappears down a tunnel, and it, you guys are no longer in initiative. As I rush over to Horton and slap me, slap his face with my trunk and give him a healing word. As I say, wake up! Okay. Um... Sure. Do you hit him hard? Oh, yeah. Like enough to damage him? Oh, I guess not initially. Not for the healing word. If that doesn't work, then yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, yeah, you heal him... <laughs> And it doesn't work. And then you hit him harder. And go ahead and roll your unarmed attack. Make sure I was on the right character sheet. So that's a 24 to hit. And it does 5 points of bludgeoning damage. How much was your healing word? My healing word, which would have been before the damage. Yep, yep. I, I haven't taken any real damage. That's what I'm I at figured. one temporary hit point now after that five. Well, my healing word was six points of damage, of healing. Healing damage. Healing damage. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, you wake up with the damage hitting you, Horton. Uh, you've got a wicked headache, like it's the worst hangover you've possibly ever had. It's up there. Um, Words then... don't get hangovers. At all? <laughs> no, they're immune. <laughs> you no. Here's what. Here's what the. You, they <laughs> think they're immune. They just don't. Re, they they're, they're they're not. They don't recognize them. Like they don't. <laughs> they're claiming to be immune. <laughs> they're. Ign, they don't even hurt. They just ignore the pain. That's like it's. They're just yeah. real good at it. Yeah. Uh, we think um, it's just normal. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's just pain, part that's of being just, a dwarf. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I shake him awake and I'm like hey buddy you up it sucks when something makes noises that don't jive well with you don't it the fuck um, happened while I'm doing that Draco um, with his wonderful trait of I'm cruel and uncaring towards others and his wonderful moat of sunbeam in his hands he's going to turn it on the dead corpse that's floating in the pool of blood and just blast it with radiant energy <laughs> okay uh, what happened what happens uh, <laughs> it smells like burnt blood number one number two the body catches on fire and burns not like it's a how do I describe this not combustible it's it's combusting but it's being fueled by the spell so it's not like it's not it's not catching fire, but it's like it's like if you blowtorch a. Uh, I get you. Yeah. If you blowtorch a piece of metal or, um. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Um, and it doesn't move. Whoa, Draco, that's pretty dark. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna keep the blade barrier up. Uh, let's just go before anything else comes down this tunnel. Okay. Uh heading Do we down have to cross the blood pool. Yeah. Uh so it like covers the entire Yeah, how do you do it? I fly. <laughs> I was figuring you guys would fly. Yeah. Uh Ooh, carries me. Okay. I grab onto Jazzy's leg. Okay. Uh you fly over the pool and you head down down down. Are you guys stealthing? At any point? Draco didn't help anyone fly. Because <laughs> he's cruel and uncaring towards others. That's so true. He did not help anybody fly. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna really yeah, how long does that how long does that effect on my max my max hits? Is that permanent? You'll find out. <clears throat> There's no way for you to know. Uh but crossing the blood pool and heading down the scab-ridden tunnels. Are you stealthing again? Yeah. Yes. I need a marching order. Is it the same marching order? Yeah, I'll take the front again. Yeah, let's take the same marching order. Motherfucker. 
Five. First one was a 19. I got a nat 20. Five. That doesn't matter because it's disadvantage, but I still got a 16, so that ain't bad. Pretty good. <laughs> 17. 13 for Lulu. Draco also got a nat 20 for a 23. Sweet. I got a five, so. Yeah, clanking <laughs> in the front. Clanking in the front. <laughs> uh, heading down the tunnel, you hear a deep voice uh, in abyssal, and Draco starts translating uh, this deep, deep guttural voice is yelling at these infidels it's calling them to figure out how to open the doors do you guys continue do you stop the doors seem to be that way we certainly do okay head forward and you do see the doors ahead of you and you also see let me pull up the box text Everybody loves box text. Okay. Brass double doors stand exposed in the walls of the scab. A relief image on the doors depict a blindfolded angel wielding a sword. And carved into the front door frame are beautiful gold inlaid runes. Three goat-headed demons with barbed tails throw themselves against the door as a corpulent ape-like fiend with tusks and tiny wings kicks at them and roars at them, commanding them in abyssal. They don't seem to have noticed your approach. The rumbling you heard earlier is still there, but it's not growing stronger. What do you do? Look back at my group and in a wish for like, do we just fuck them up or what? Um, hold on one second. Change my spells. Fuck. Um, oh, I know there it is. I I I uh. I got an idea here. Oh no, that's a terrible idea. Scratch it. Scratch it. Nope, not gonna do it. Terrible idea. We still have the doors that we can't open necessarily quickly. Yeah, let's fuck them up. I will cast Spirit Guardians and then run at them. Okay, let's roll <laughs> I initiative. I will do it alongside him. All right, roll initiative. Fuck yeah, that's a good roll for, for a cleric. Same. Damn. Uh, Draco and Jazzy both got mod twenties. With Draco having a better. So got a mod twenty. Last initiative, we all sucked. This initiative, we're doing great. 40. <laughs> as 18. long as I'm ahead of the bad guys, I don't care. Which one of you has the best decks? Uh, Draco has a plus three, 16. Okay. Plus two for me. And I have a plus one. Okay. Draco. Shit, now I have to figure out what he's doing. Um, he is going to. Uh, how long is this? Oh, just a minute. So Sunbeam is surely gone by now. Yes. Uh, he will... <clears throat> he is going to... <clears throat> oh, hey, he's got that. He's going to throw a fireball at him. Fireball, okay. Fire fireball. Deck saves. Let me make sure he doesn't have a... Uh... Uh, meta magic that helps. Meta magic. To get one target of the spell. Um, nah, he won't use that. So yeah, a deck save against his DC of 16. Shit, I almost rolled my dice off the table. Two, two make it and two uh, fail. The large... Uh, one that seems to the now Feshni who seems to be in charge of the goat headed creatures fails. Twenty seven total. Twenty seven, twenty seven. It's crazy. 
Gary's not here and Draco all of a sudden does damage. Half of 27 <laughs> is 13. Shit, he can't see any of them, can he? Oh, fuck. No. Fuck. Wait, can but he can hear them, right? Yeah. He just can't yeah. see them? It's fireball. He throws a fireball out the door. I think it's fine. I think we, it's fine. I said there was something there. <laughs> yeah. We kind of talked about I mean, it a little bit. Abyssal's being yelled, so I feel like it's such a large explosion. I was going to say, so we can get yeah. a general area. Yeah. Half if he was 13. smart enough to ask, we'd also just tell him, like, throw it at the door. They're, hey, they're right. Yeah. There. <laughs> like... yeah. Good point. Um, so that'll be his. So with that, he is good. When they hit are hit with the fireball exploding around them, they seem to be less affected than you would was... expect. That's why I didn't upcast it. <laughs> sh -sh 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 shabby. Um, so we're above them? Um, no, you're kind of, you're like, you're maybe like 10 feet up on a ledge, and then it drops down 10 feet, and it's flat. If I am looking at the group of them, so there's three goat, goat devils, and then one big ape devil? Demon, yeah. Demon? Um, are any of them, like... In a line, like, uh, from my perspective, or am I basically looking down at all four of them? You could get two of them in a line. The three goat-headed ones are kind of spread out against the door, banging on it and trying to figure out how to get it. So you could line up the big, now Feshni, the ape-faced one, with one of the okay. goat-headed. I'll, I'll try out this javelin of lightning. Let's do it. So I... Uh... I'm assuming I use dex to throw that. Uh, tell me how it works. It should tell so you. So this javelin is a magic weapon. When you hurl it and speak its command word, it transforms into a bolt of lightning forming a line five feet wide that extends out from you to a target within 120 feet. Each creature in the line, excluding you and the target, must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw and then gets into the damage. So it's just a dex save, right? So I don't have to do anything. It's just a deck save for them. I don't have to like aim it or anything. It's a deck save for them. Cool. Yeah, so I do that. The big ape one fails. Nice. And the goat one, hearing a noise, jumps out of the way and makes it save. So that's 19 damage for the one that got hit, and then half that for the other one. And it's when it hits them. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So it says taking 4d6 lightning damage on a failed save. Damn. So that's 19 on the fail. And then half as much damage. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Yeah. So it's just switch what I originally said because it's, yeah. When the lightning bolt hits them, it too seems to be doing less damage to them than you would expect. But they did take so damage. The lightning bolt turns back into a javelin when it reaches the target make a ranged weapon attack against the target. Yep, there you go. So we, I assume you're saying uh, you, it, you're you throwing it at the now Feshni, the ape head one. Yeah. Okay, now do a ranged... So now it's a ranged attack, yeah. which I assume is dex. I actually it's... think javelins aren't finesse. Or it's they strength. Haven't... Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's still strength. That's uh... what makes it such a great barbarian weapon. <clears throat> so I think I... I think... Okay. Do I get to roll that twice? Is that I think I'd uh, Why would you advantage on strength? Uh I think that's only for strength actions, not strength weapons. saving throws. Yeah. Um so that is a eighteen. Yes, that hits. Okay. I think it's just eight, eight damage. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't think, I don't think there's any like bonuses or anything for. I mean, it's a strength weapon, so I think I still. I'll take your word for it. To add your strength. Yeah. So, uh, it's uh, 
12 damage. Okay. Anything else? Would you like to um, rage or run forward or... Yeah, I'll get in front of everybody and just run forward. Okay, rage. Yeah, I'm raging. Okay. Bonus action rage, good deal. Jazzy, it's your turn. Great. Um, are they all within a 40-foot cube? I would like to cast slow on yes, all of they them are. if I can. I will cast slow on all of them in that case. It is a wisdom saving throw. So now Feshni passes. And the... Uh, does a 15 pass? It does not. Does a 16 pass? Uh, my save is 16. So, so yes. It does. One of them passes. Uh, one of the bullets owls pass the goat-headed creatures and two fail. So those two that failed have half speed, minus two to their AC and dex saving throws, and it cannot use reactions. Then on its turn, it can only use an action or a bonus action, not both. And regardless of their abilities, it can only make one melee or ranged attack during its turn. Okay. And then if I, they don't sound like spellcasters, but that has a whole thing. If it comes up. Yeah, it's two two rounds, two actions to cast a spell, right? Uh, they have to roll. If they don't roll well enough, then yes, it's two rounds to cast a spell. Okay. Anything else? Um, that would be... I will jump down off of the ledge, but not charge at them. Okay. Horton. Did I happen to get my spirit guardians off pre-initiative roll or no? Sure. If I did, sure. then I will just run and action dash at them if I have to. to get okay. To them. Pass. The now Feshni passes. And I just did it at regular third It's a 15 level. feet radius, right? Yeah. Okay, the others are not within range. Okay, so it's 14 damage, so 7 to the passer. Anything else? That'll be it. Bulezao. Bulezao. What about Lulu? She rolled poorly in initiative. She's still coming up. Uh, okay. Starts its turn. Bleep, blah, blue. Hmm. They're just going to keep banging on the door. One of them will do it very much more slowly than the other two. Lulu. Lulu. Is going to fly forward. It's probably can't read. It's probably a pull, not a push. It's, what it's possible. It's what they're doing wrong. <laughs> Uh, in hell, there's actually a third option. It's pull, push, and fuck you. Ah, uh, to see. open doors. Reasonable. Uh, Lulu flies forward thirty feet, and then her infernal appendages. Her her. What? A, why can't I think of the word? For uh. Limbs? Prosthetics? Prosthetics. Jesus Christ, that's the word <laughs> I was looking for. Her infernal prosthetics shoot rockets out of the bottom, and she flies forward even faster, getting to the Ooh, door. got an upgrade. <laughs> getting to the door, she trumpets forth in, above the bulla's owls, and the doors swing open. Blasting the Bulazows in the face. Uh, a bright white light uh, sears these demons. And the one with slow on it has disadvantage on only deck saves? Just decks, yeah. Okay. 
fail fail that's a one fail I don't know oh. if any of them started their turn in my thing uh it hasn't gotten to the one that is within your okay. uh thing yet um all four fail and radiant energy hits them for 8d10 burning the bulazows where they stand say hello to the camera why are you being shy Row. Row. And you guys are hit with the light. You feel a great warmth, but you are not damaged by it. The bright light. Uh, the three Bulazows are now dust. And the Nalfeshni's turn starts his turn. He needs to make a save. 19. He passes. He'll take half. He takes six. Nalfeshni telepathically says to you guys, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop. Stop. That's what we're trying to do. Get the doors open. Stop hitting me. We can work together. That's going to use his turn to say that. None of us understood him. One of you did. <laughs> I think I did. Hell yeah. Brian, can you look up telepathy real quick and see if that need, has a language or if it's just understood? It, it usually says one way or another whether it is or not, whether they can un understand you regardless of if they understand your speech or if you have to share a common language. We'll just call this it's, abyssal telepathy then. It's not always a given. On Draco's turn, he understood that. What does Draco do? Um, because he was telepathically communicated with, can he get a bead on where this guy is? <laughs> For a no. non-area of effect thing? No. Okay, well in that case, he's only got one thing to do, and he's gonna, he's gonna say, Nope, fuck you! And blast a fireball in the general direction. Because <laughs> he is cruel and uncaring <laughs> towards others. Horton, <laughs> make a deck save. Okay. Okay. That's fitting. <laughs> that wouldn't stop him. Fine. 18. That'll pass. 22. That'll also pass. Thirty-three points have to sixteen. I take no damage. I hide behind my shield. The nice. Nice. now Feshni takes half of the half. And and Draco does say in Abyssal, nope, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> when he does that. Copy that. <laughs> Shab Shabarific. God for shield master. Right. That, that so it was be. just so all I heard was abyssal and then then Draco say fuck you. Yeah. Well he also said that was abyssal, an abyssal. So... No, so you just heard you, abyssal. Yeah. You just heard abyssal. So he I said just... something and then still blasted off a fireball in his direction. Yeah, so I just go at the one that that Draco fired a fireball at. And I just swing with my great axe, and it's a 19 to hit. Yes. And 23 damage. Yes. And then for second attack, uh, 22 to hit, and 29 damage. Yes. I accept your damage. Jazzy. 
Jazzy is going to, since he doesn't have to concentrate on that anymore, since they're all dead. Um, he's going to second level guiding bolt. Okay, make your you. attack. There it is. It's a plus. Can you tell your cat to meow? No, he's not a big meower. 19? He's actually a very quiet cat. Unless he wants food, then he speaks up. Is he one of those cats that has a weak meow? No, it's quite loud. He's 19 just... hits. Doesn't say much. What are you doing? If I were to ever get a cat, I think I'd get a Maine Coon. Those big ones. He's he's pretty cool. He's he's a very good lap cat. He just hangs out most of the time. Sixteen radiant damage, and he's glowing. Lit the fuck up. He's more than bloodied. Horton. Uh, how many are still alive? One. All of them? One? Oh, just, just the just one? Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to attack them then. With what? <clears throat> My mace. Is it magical? No. Copy that. Hit away. Does a 16 hit? It does not. Then, uh, I just stand there and put my shield back in front of me and wait for him to hit me. Dead, 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 dead. Lulu! Lulu is gonna t Lulu is gonna tusk this guy. 19 hits. Five piercing. It is now the Nalfeshni's turn, and the Nalfeshni needs to make a whiz save. Pass. Spirit Guardians. Oh, sorry. He passed, so he takes six damage. Now, Feshni is uh, going to clap its arms together and teleport away up a tunnel above you, kind of diagonally above you. The one, uh, uh, tunnel that you Wait. didn't. Yep. Is that a spell? Uh, is, is he casting a spell to teleport? No, he's not. Okay. Uh, magically teleports. That's it. No casting. Just had to make sure. Well, yep, okay. yep, yep. Uh, so he's now away from you guys. Draco. Can't see him. Can't, well, yeah, Draco can't see him. <laughs> Definitely can't see him. Um... <clears throat> Probably uh, doesn't know that he teleported. No, not at all. Um, but this time he didn't talk to him, so he doesn't know he's there necessarily either. Um, could be dead. He's going to just shout out to the guys, so is he dead? Okay. That's his turn. <laughs> so the dude didn't attack. He didn't cause any any damage. But uh, yeah, so that'll be his turn. Okay. Shab he'll, fly, he'll fly down to, to where Four. Jazzy is, just down yep. the ledge, yeah. Shab. There's still someone left to fight? Yeah, he teleported. Oh, so he's still around. I thought you said he was gone. Um, he is no longer within your range. Can I can I reach him if I run? No. Uh, you'd have to climb the fleshy walls. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I just go get my javelin and throw it at him. Okay. Uh, um, I mean, is it going to stick into a ceiling or something where I can't get it? Possibly. Mm. Nah, I just, I'll just take the dodge action, I guess. If okay. there's no one, no one around to attack. Jazzy. It just occurred to me that he was glowing from guiding bolt, and I forgot to remind whoever attacked him next that they got advantage. Nobody oh, attacked him. I did. Oh. Oh. There you go. I thought someone did. Well. 
I missed it. My bad. Too late. Too late. Um, Jazzy is going to. He can still see him, right? Like we can. He, if he makes his way we closer to the he... door, because mm-hmm. think of it okay. like gotcha. Yeah, which he would. He would yeah. go towards okay. the door. So he sees the guy. Um... He's one hundred and twenty feet away, though. Okay. In that case. Yeah, I'll fling another guiding bolt his way. Um, Make a your attack. This one will just be a first level. Do it. Eighteen. That just hits. Twelve. Sixteen. Eighteen points of radiant damage. Your guiding bolt shoots out, hitting him in the back of his tiny winged, hitting his tiny wings, uh, boring a hole in them through his chest, and he falls dead, melting into demon ichor, which adds to the sludge that's pouring from certain parts of the walls. A triumphantly trumpet. <laughs> Got him! Lulu, fl- Lulu floats down, and uh, her rocket prosthetics turn off and we're out of initiative uh lulu thanks for opening these doors that's uh pretty handy how'd, how'd you know i had a hunch i've been my memory's been coming back it was gone for a while and some things are some of my memories are dreamlike and I just decided to take a chance on opening the door and it worked good, out. Good chance. I also wanted to try out the boots. Oh, you just got them, huh? Yeah, after they were done torturing me, they fitted me with these to help you guys out. Oh. Rough but neat. How did yeah, they torture you? Did they let rats yeah. crawl up your trunk? Whoa, dude! I'm just curious how a demon Dark. or a devil tortures a an elephant. Jazzy is clearly uncomfortable and starts like. I am sorry. I clearly is drunk. I clearly stepped over <laughs> a line, and I rescind the question. No, it's fine. I just don't want to think about that. Ugh. Lulu you says. You can answer, Lulu. That's fine. Lulu <laughs> says. They brought in a vat of this liquid acid and they slowly dipped my legs in the acid over time until there was nothing left I'm so sorry that's rough it's a rough day to have and then they replaced them with those they replaced them with these after I don't think they intended to but one day they came in and put these on and told me I was to be of use. Well, I'm glad sorry, you, you had to go through that. Legs. Yeah, yeah, hopefully I mean, we can save Zeriel. To be fair, you, you, you have been of use. You blew that, you sparkled that guy's face off earlier and you opened these doors. Really, you're killing it, Lulu. Great job. Fuck, drop to die. Uh, now, we're not going to get our faces melted when we walk through this door, right? I even, don't think even so. Draco? Unless you're undead or a demon. Uh, Either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, I think we're good. I don't know about him, but... Just Draco, when you go through, hold your breath. Maybe. <laughs> That'll help. Uh... Yeah, so you guys go through the door. That's where we're headed. All the grit and junk covering you when you enter across the threshold. The bright white light burns away the blood, staining your clothes. Uh, Restorative energy brings life to numb muscles as the glow softens to reveal the interior of a sun-kissed cathedral. 
How light passes through the scab and into the stained glass windows is a mystery only magic can answer. Pillars line a path from the door to a raised dais carved with celestial runes. Embedded in a stone atop the dais is a glowing long sword. And as Lulu crosses the entryway, uh, you see where her flesh meets the infernal prosthetics, the flesh starts to grow over the prosthetics and completely replace the prosthetics, and her limbs are seemingly whole again. Oh, Lulu! Your feet! Check yeah, that that's out. cool. <laughs> Hopefully we can... Pull that sword out and save Zeriel. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll give it a shot. Before I do it, though, I'm going to cast Protection from Evil and Good on myself. Okay. And I'll slap you on the behind and give you a guidance. Thanks, bud. Um, Good, I'm Tiger. I'll approach the sword and try to, you know, two hands on the hilt and then my trunk wrapped around the cross guard trying to yank it out. Okay. On the dais, any of you speak celestial? I do. Nay. It says, the hero who becomes one with this blade exists no longer. All right, guys, this is what it says, but just throwing it out there. I have no intention of becoming one with a blade. I'm just going to try to pull it out. Okay. As you get closer, a ghost appears and all of a sudden all of you are pulled towards the ghost very quickly and you're no longer in the citadel. The translucent image of a woman in her 30s wearing plate armor and bearing a thin scar on her cheek appears before you. As she points towards the holophant, Lulu's eyes turn pure white. A whisper fills your ears and says, I remember. A wave of radiant energy erupts from Lulu's body, and in that blinding flash, the ghostly warrior that appeared before you and the holophant and the bleeding citadel disappear the solace of the citadel is replaced by havoc, screams of panic, and acrid smoke. You stand at the edge of a small town of burning cottages, fields, and trees. A broken sign on the ground reveals the settlement's name, Idle Glen. Shrieking townsfolk run from cackling, snarling demons and gnolls. And that's where we'll pick it up next week. Sounds like a lovely place. So... That's a wild change of scenery. Yeah, <laughs> real quick. Yeah. Okay, got it. All right. More dream stuff with Lulu. <laughs> or Yale, the ghost. But We'll figure it out next week, guys. We skipped a good. lot of shit. I, <laughs> I was kidding. That's. I was like, wow, the sword was in the first room of the Citadel? That's crazy. <laughs> it literally is by the oh, book, really? but I'm saying just... Everything we, else that we everything skipped. else <laughs> was skipped. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Tom. Thank you, Jake. Uh, I will plug my Friday game of Star Wars, where I play Turk Bango, on Roll for Change on Twitch at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Fridays. I think I already said that. I'll say it again. Does anyone else have anything to plug? Nope. Okay. Can't say I do. Cool. Thanks, guys. We'll do it again next week, hopefully. And uh, be good to yourselves and be good to others. We'll see you next time. Wear your masks. Wear your motherfucking masks.